Hello everyone, Alicia Lawrence here from Webpage FX, bringing you another SEO webinar through Schweiky Media. Have you ever wondered how to take your website to the next level? Perhaps you put it through a free website analyzer like the one we have on Webpage FX's site, but you're still a little confused about how it's going to help your site. But like all analyzers, they do a very basic audit. And today I'm going to teach you how to do your own SEO and inbound marketing audit. Yes, I said the word audit. <laughs> no one actually likes the word audit, probably because it reminds us of tax season or uh, when governments want to audit our information. But we're talking about internet marketing here. And for all internet marketers, we have a very fun job. Matter of fact, internet marketing itself is in like the top eight fun careers to have. So I'm hoping to change your perception of the word audit. Matter of fact, don't even think of it like an audit. Instead, think of it as an annual checkup to see how healthy your site is. Now we've talked a lot about inbound links, content marketing, and even other various SEO tactics to help boost your rankings and conversions, but these tactics won't actually be effective if your site isn't well and has obvious flaws that is prohibiting it to ranking well in the search engines. Now a site checkup will also help you find opportunities that you might have otherwise missed. And it also shows you where you could focus your online efforts for this next year. Now I won't be going over the things I covered in a previous webinar for the on-site SEO, such as meta titles, descriptions, alt tags, and other ways to optimize your website. Uh, so I'll be jumping right in. So if you haven't seen that yet, I highly suggest to go uh, watch that webinar first and then come back to this one. So the first step is to go to the doctors, right? How healthy is your site? Now there's going to be three main tools I'm going to have you download. It's Screaming Frog, SEM Rush, and Google Webmaster Tools. Now Screaming Frog, you're going to actually scan your website and it's going to tell you different errors. Uh, in your metadata, if you have any rel canonicals, uh, and you need to fix any page errors. Most will be things like open tags or stray elements and uh, attribute errors. Even the best websites usually have 20 errors on a page. It's very common, but you still really do need to clean these up, especially since Google is starting to be a little bit more picky. And it's always good to have clean uh, metadata on there. The next tool is SEMrush. What you're going to do on this tool is you're going to plug in your URL and you're going to look at your traffic. Is it steady? Are you spiking during seasons? Are you slowly declining for a reason and you don't know? Maybe there is a huge drop in traffic during one month and you have no idea what happened. Maybe it was a penalty. Uh, and we'll actually look at that with Google Webmaster Tools. The second thing you're going to look on in SEMrush is your competitors. You can plug in several competitors into SEMrush and compare them to your own site. See how you rank compared to them and uh, how much traffic you're getting compared to them. The next tool is Google Webmaster Tools. And uh, just to show you what you can track with those is mostly you track impressions and technical data. Now, the impressions that you actually track um, aren't necessarily like traffic where they go onto your site. They're more if someone types in a query and it brings up the website. They don't actually have to click on it, but that's an impression where it's still on the page. Uh, and they could click on it, they couldn't click on it. And if they didn't click on it, why was that a missed opportunity? So it'll kind of give you a look into why that's happening. Um, as well as if you have a penalty. Now, if you don't have Google Webmaster Tools, you definitely need to get one. So I'm going to go through quickly how to actually set that up for yourself. Uh, the first step is to uh, log into your Gmail that you've been using for your company. Go to Google Webmaster Tools, click on Add a Site, type in the URL to pop up. Oh, when the pop up, sorry. When the pop-up comes up, type in your URL, and then log into FileZilla if that's the tool you've been using. That's the one that's most common. Uh, and then you're going to download the file that Google gives you through putting in your site, and you're going to add it to public HTML. And you can see that right there in the picture. You're going to drag it across from left to right, and then you're, that's basically it. You're basically verified once you've pulled it in. 
Uh, usually it's not much trouble than that. You do need to go back to the Google Webmaster Tools and click Verify. But other than that, you should be all set up and ready to go. So next up, what exactly should you look for? Now there's a whole bunch of different things you should look for depending on your site. Are you e-commerce? Do you do mostly content? Are you a magazine? So there's definitely a lot of variety and flexibility here. That's why it's always so hard when you put your website through those automatic analyzer tools that you can't really tell what exactly needs done without getting a personal and professional look at your actual website. So I'm going to try to help you as much as possible to understand kind of what you should look for. But definitely, if you need more help, if you're seeing things that you just don't understand, don't hesitate to email me, tweet me, to contact someone here at WebPageFX, and we would love to help you. So when you're looking at your site, like we had mentioned before, you're going to definitely look at traffic. You're going to look at the impressions that Google Webmaster has. And also on Google Webmaster, you're going to look at penalties. Now, penalties are actually something we're going to go over in a future webinar coming up. And uh, there's, you're going to look under the manual action area, and that's where you're going to see any penalties that you might have on your site. And you'll need to figure out which page the penalty is on. Maybe it's a link that's going into your site that's penalized, or maybe it's a keyword. And sometimes those are the worst when you have a main keyword that is penalized, but it's like the huge main keyword for your site. And those are very difficult, but I've removed them before, so it's definitely possible to remove them and get your rankings back up, so don't be discouraged if that's the case. And we'll go over more in detail how to do that in the future. Uh, you also want to look at site architecture, such as pages and subdomains. Uh, regarding subdomains, try to keep all your pages to a single subdomain as it will give uh, you a higher ranking on all your pages. Uh, but a single subdomain like a blog.cjpony.com, uh, with that blog up there, that's what a subdomain is. But that's okay. A lot of sites have that. It's just we found it better to just have it all off of one site, such as cjpony.com slash blog. So, so the subject is up for debate whether subdomains pass value to the rest of the site. We don't really know. We think it has some uh, from what we've just experienced, but this is why we all want it to be on just one main root domain instead of a whole bunch of subdomains. So if you have a whole bunch of subdomains on your site, it's time to uh, condense it and figure out how to get them all on the one root domain. Another thing you want to look at is navigation. Uh, you want it to crawl less than three layers deep, and it's even better if it's within two clicks of your home page. And you want to make sure it's easy to navigate for both the crawlers and for your users, especially for your users. And of course, make your articles accessible in searches. And then lastly on this list is keywords and links. So I'm going to actually link to uh, a crawler FX, which is one of those tools that will crawl your site for links and keywords to see how you're doing in there. I'll tag that into the uh, written part of this post. Uh, but just to give you an idea of what to look for with links as well, uh, links to your site section and webmaster tools. Uh, Google doesn't like site-wide links, which are like the links that are just to a single place on the bottom of your website that's on every single page of your website. They really frown upon that ever since the Penguin update. Um, other things to look for is anchor text variation. Uh, it's typically said you want 70% of your anchor text to be branded or a URL, so your brand name, or even just a URL hyperlink. You can also do your brand name and then a keyword, or what we call white noise, which is very non-targeted anchor text. You want it not to seem like you're putting your specific keyword phrase in this link, because Google really frowns upon that now. That's 70% of all your anchor text that you should have. 20% is partial or phrase or broad match. And then the last 10%, you can actually have the exact anchor text for the keywords that you're really looking to rank for. You also want to look for no follow links. Uh, if you have a, a link that's going out to kind of a shady site, but you still want a link to there for your customers, especially if they have a DA 
under 30, you definitely want to consider no following that link. And it's very easy just to add a rel no follow HTML tag in your uh, link HTML. And of course, if it's like a irrelevant site that you're linking to, consider no following that as well. So the last part of links is where are your links coming from? And they need to be a well-rounded profile. Uh, and the majority should be coming from, or the majority should not be coming from any one source, such as directories or EDU links, even if they're great links, like EDU links are, are awesome if you get like a relevant scholarship link, but you don't want your entire uh, profile to be EDU links because Google will automatically flag that and be like, something's off. So definitely try to have a nice, well-rounded profile. And lastly, when it comes to just links, uh, avoid dynamic URLs that contain dollar signs, ampersands, question marks, uh, pluses, or equal signs. You want it to be static using just the words, for example, for a title, uh, using your domain, and then how to SEO or whatever those words are that you want to be specific about in that URL. And try to keep it to less than 100 characters and, of course, user-friendly so people can share it on social and remember it if they can. So the next part is page exclusions. Now, this is where SEO audits kind of get a little bit confusing. Uh, first off, page exclusions are used for duplicate content or pages you might have little or no content on or even pages you just don't want to be searchable. Uh, this could be like a... Uh, account page for e-commerce sites that people just don't want to have ranking. It just doesn't make sense. And usually those are links that you already have readily available on your uh, home page at the top for accounts. So there are two ways to do exclusions. You have the robots.txt file, which is more of the older way, and the no index file, which is becoming more popular as well. The robots.txt file is uh, restricts access to pages on your site, uh, but make sure you aren't inadvertently blocking pages you want Google to index. How you do is you upload a file via FileZilla or whatever program you're using in a folder to tell Google which pages to crawl in that section. Uh, pages to add a robot.txt file would be like the WordPress-content slash plugin page. Uh, since many of the plugins actually have links back to the creator site, you don't want to lose your link juice to uh, those simple uh, plugin links. So definitely robot.txt that file. Another way is through the no index tags. Now, the difference between robots and no index is robots can be done on full files, and you actually have to upload the file through FileZilla to the page. But no index tags are actually done in the header, and they can only be done on single pages. So this one's better when you just have like a specific page in a section that you just want to no index. Um, for example, tags on pages like uh, uh, WordPress includes, where it has a dash or slash tag, slash category, or slash author, and, and make sure those aren't being crawled because sometimes they can be duplicated content. And once again, duplicated content is uh, punished a lot by Google. So you really want to be careful that you're not accidentally uh, getting duplicate content on your site. Even on HTTPS, if you have you know, your site coming up on HTTPS and HTTP and it's the same page, that could be considered duplicate content. So you need to make sure you put a, a rel canonical on that to show Google which page is actually the one they should uh, index and crawl. Uh, going back to Rails and Tech, and I'll touch on Rel Canonical a little bit later. Uh, I mean, no index tags are the ones we're on now. So no index tags, another way to tell Google not to index a page. Uh, I prefer using no index follow tags on pages like the WordPress includes. Uh, therefore, the follows part of it uh, will allow Google to still uh, pass links, and I actually put a little uh, metadata there for you to see uh, how you would put that in the header. Also keep in mind with no index pages, you'll want to remove those from your sitemap as well. 
In order to see uh, what pages are in, used for not rel canonical, you'll want to download the Moz SEO toolbar. I forgot to mention that earlier. Uh, and that's what we're going into next is redirects. Uh, or mostly talking about duplicate content. In almost all situations, uh, a 301 redirect should be used when it comes to 404 page. Uh, you can also use a 302 redirect for temporary pages because of like promotional campaigns or such. Uh, but definitely for the majority, if it's going to be a steady 301 redirect, I, you'll want to do that. Any page you change the URL after publishing or if it's deleted, it should be redirected to the correct or similar page, or if anything, to a page that has all the site links so that people can choose where to go since that page is no longer available. Uh, like I said earlier, make sure there's no duplicate content. This is one thing that most companies don't realize they have on their site, and it's what gets you in trouble. And it's really an easy change. So just make sure you're double checking uh, any possibilities that you might have duplicate content on there. And like I said, there's several ways to handle duplicate content. Uh, you could tell Google to uh, do a rel canonical, meaning like saying this is the page that is out of A and B, the same pages, that A is the one that you should index and B is just uh, there because of some other reason. You can also get rid of the B page and then use the 301 redirect to fix that broken link. Um, and just because you're fixing the broken link, I do want to mention you should still have a 404 pages because uh, it's just necessary just in case someone along the line has a link that they go to and it's no longer there. So definitely get a 404 page regardless. And almost lastly, you have your site audit or site checkup is the page load speed. Now, Google has emphasized that speed matters. So you want to make sure that your speed is good under three seconds, of course. Uh, there's a few tools there for you. If you have a WordPress, it's easy just to do the plugin, the W3 Total Cache plugin. If not, you can check your website speed by going to two of those first links right there. Uh, the second one will actually go through uh, a list of things to fix and how to fix them on both your website and your mobile site. So that's definitely helpful, and that's your Google tool, so that's always reliable. A few ways I want to point out that you should help your low speed if it's kind of suffering is to get rid of any unnecessary pages or plugins. A lot of times we try out all these plugins and then some of them get extinct, or some of them we just disable and they never use. But even if you're not using them, they're still taking up crawl space. So definitely get rid of them, just clean up your site, and to help your uh, page load faster. Another way is to reduce the number of JavaScript files, and of course have them load asynchronously. And then reduce images using JPEG Mini, which is a tool, just type in JPEG Mini. It'll reduce the file size. If that's not enough, you might need to consider taking off a few photos that you have if your uh, page or website is photo heavy. And then lastly, combine CSS files. Uh, so of course, it's less for Google to crawl. And these are really easy ways that anyone can just speed uh, the load of their page. The last part is actually conversions, but that's going to take an entire webinar to go over on how to optimize your website's conversions. So that's actually going to be our next webinar where I hope you join me. Until then, Merry Christmas, everyone, from the family at WebPageFX, and I hope you have a very happy new year.